Hey Stargazers, this is your weekly astrological forecast beginning August 21st. And yes, if there is only one transit that you need to know about this week, then stay tuned because we're going to go over it in a lot of detail. It's going to affect you now into the rest of this year and frankly into 2023 so you don't want to miss out. First off, the energy of this week is very much a combo of the Lovers, the Major Arcana card of Gemini, and the Fool, the Major Arcana card of Uranus. Maybe it's more appropriate for me to reverse the Fool as Uranus goes retrograde this week, urging us to rethink and redirect some of our mental energies. I'll talk a lot more about the impacts of this transit during the day by day, but what you need to know is that this week is a major one for actual and foreshadowed changes in our current life path. The choices that we make now will inform later decisions. That's the lover's card. And so this week, pay careful attention to any major decisions that you're making, as so many planets are turning retrograde or are joining already retrograde planets in the sky. Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto, they're already moving backwards, so the rest of these planets are going to join them, and this is going to have some pretty long-lasting effects. In short, the energies of this week include Mars' entry into Gemini, this happened yesterday, the Sun's entry into Virgo and square to Mars, and also the ongoing Uranus story. Taken together, these and some other transits are setting us up for some serious questioning of what the heck we're doing in our lives. The choices we make now and into early 2023 are going to be profound. Now, the major transit that began yesterday, but I really wanted to talk about this week as part of the forecast, is Mars's ingress into Gemini. The, impa- the impacts of this transit on the Sun's ingress into Virgo and the new moon this week are huge. If there's one transit that you need to watch, as I said, it's going to be this one. Because not only does it aspect the sun and color the new moon, which is of course a new moon cycle, but it's going to be staying in the sign of Gemini for over 30 weeks from August the 20th to March 24th, 2023, and we can expect some major celestial housekeeping. Mars will finally enter the sign of Cancer on March the 25th, 2023, and that's going to be a game changer. It's going to be in the place of its fall, so that's a major debility, and so you can expect challenges next year arising from the choices that we make over its sojourn through the sign of Gemini now. To maximize our discussion of the transit, let's talk some basic astrological theory about planetary synodic cycles. A synodic cycle is just a fancy term for a planet's transit from one particular point until it's returned to that same point. The most typical synodic cycle to map is a planet's relationship to the Sun, but you could measure any planetary relationship, including the Mars-Venus cycle for relationships, or Jupiter-Saturn cycles, which are epoch-making cycles and for which we owe much of our understanding of this planetary combination to the 9th century Persian Muslim astrologer Abu Mashar. Most commonly, however, we measure Mars's synodic cycle by its conjunction with the Sun using the template of the eightfold lunation cycle. The lunation cycle is considered from the new moon to the balsamic, with the initial half of the cycle up to the full moon being all about the increasing of light. It concerns the initial seed moment at the point of the new moon or the conjunction with the Sun. Then, as the moon undergoes its waxing cycle, the critical aspects it forms correspond to a certain archetypal event in our lives, such as the first crisis moment at the opening square and the culmination of action at the full moon, where some pivotal understanding is reached. The second half of the cycle, when the light is decreasing or waning, is all about disseminating and integrating knowledge. It includes a closing crisis moment, a consolidation of new structures, and a processing and internalizing of new information and ways of being. This is the essential template for all planetary cycles, just the periods of time may differ, with opening and closing squares containing the so-called crisis points, and the opposition or full moon archetypal moment representing a major period of culmination, a turning point, or a time where a critical choice has to be made, and certain limits, restrictions, and obstacles need to be overcome for personal growth and development. In the case of Mars, let's take a look at the major cycles as measured by its relationship with the Sun. You'll see that the major cycles began in the areas shaded purple, when Mars becomes a morning star and is in the heart of the Sun. 
This is when it's going through its metaphorical rebirth, initiating the analogous new moon phase. The current cycle began on October 8, 2021 in the sign of Libra. The sign that the conjunction between Mars and the Sun took place in colors and flavors the entire transit. If we think about Venus-ruled Libra, then this transit could very well have asked us to consider our romantic relationships or friendships, how we balance work and play, our values, or the role of luxury, pleasure, and beauty in our lives more broadly. It might have seen us initiating new partnerships or cutting people out of our lives because Mars can also be quite a slashing and excising energy. Alternatively, we might have been drastically reconsidering the role of pleasure, creativity, and sensuality in our lives, but perhaps with more of a cerebral spin, given that Libra is an air sign. More specifically, looking at our own individual natal charts, the house that Libra rules will help narrow down and discreetly pinpoint the topics that this transit would have had you deal with. Any aspects that natal planets make to the Sun or Mars will also flesh the storyline out for you. And of course, your natal Mars would also be activated by this transit. So look to any planets that might be at 15 degrees to understand if that area of life was also triggered and what kind of aspect is being made. This will help describe the quality of the experience you could be having during this current transit. You will also want to think about how this topic was activated back in 2006 when Mars and the Sun were also conjunct in Libra. And for those old enough to remember 1989, look to that year as well. This is going to signal the larger cyclical nature of this transit for you. Now, because Mars has a wonky and irregular orbital path, the conjunctions with Libra won't automatically won't automatically match up with the oppositions in Gemini, since the 2006 conjunction saw the opposition take place in the sign of Cancer in late 2007. But for those who can look back to 1989 and 1990-ish, you may find this transit the most significant to consider since this is when we saw a similar patterning to the upcoming Mars transit. For Millennials and Gen Z, this is going to be a defining opposition for many of you since this is going to be the first major Mars opposition occurring in the sign of Gemini. Look to your charts to see what house it's in. That's where those changes are going to happen. Now, I want to cover off some specific dates associated with this half of the Mars transit and talk a little bit about what we can expect as a prelude to a deeper dive later this year when Mars turns retrograde. As I already said, Mars entered Gemini on August the 20th and will station retrograde on October 30th at 25 degrees of Gemini. It will go direct again on January the 12th, 2023 at 8 degrees of Gemini. These degree points of 8 and 25 respectively are going to be important, so pay attention on the days in and around September the 4th to 5th because that's when Mars will be going over the 8th degree of Gemini. Events taking place within a few days on either side of that date could have their storyline resume or continued in January, and everything transpiring between Mars's retrograde and direct motion in early 2023 can see reversals or significant changes occur. Also, make sure that you note any planets you may have at these degrees natally, since they will be also pulled into this evolving storyline. The next important date are those of Mars's maximum brightness on December 7th and first appearance on January 9th. In astrology, a planet's visibility or invisibility is huge. When a planet becomes visible in the sky, something concerning the planet in the house and sign it's in metaphorically comes to light and it can occur quite literally in our lives. This will be especially impactful if this Mars transit is angular for you. So mutable signs, that's Gemini risings, Virgo, Sag, and Pisces, keep your eyes peeled, but this goes to everyone to a lesser extent. Also, when planets become visible, we can get a burst of confidence or forward motion to actualize our goals. This can be following a period of retreat or isolation or even a period of having felt invisible. Finally, you may want to pay attention to any planets that ping off against the 8 degree point of Mars's direct motion. That includes any squares to that degree, such as the one at 8 degrees of Libra in September, or the opposition point at 8 degrees of Sag in November. There could very well be an additional echo of events touched off by that Mars direct degree. 
Now, you need to be aware that we won't see the end of this current Mars cycle we're in until November of next year. That's when the next conjunction takes place at 25 degrees of Scorpio. That follows up with some pretty impactful transits in early 2024, including Mars getting into the mix of a dense Aquarius stellium. Talk about traffic jam. While this feels like a distant future consideration, it's always helpful for us to look at the bigger picture movements in our lives. Mars is going to be closing off a Libra tinge cycle and moving into a Scorpio one. So how will this unfold as the current transit winds down and the next one begins? We'll have to find out and you should start looking at your natal charts now. The last point that I want to raise before we take a quick sneak sneak peek at Mars's upcoming transit is the fact that I also highlighted the date of Mars's return to 8 degrees of Gemini on August the 1st, 2024. I've only recently come across a hypothesis in more, in more esoteric and shamanistic astrological circles, suggesting that Mars's cycle really begins at the opposition points. This is definitely an interesting view to chew on, since, on the one hand, we rarely take action or change something up in our lives when things are going well. Rarely do we quit our jobs, leave our marriages, or pick up and travel the world in search of ourselves if everything is going swimmingly. So this hypothesis of the Mars cycle occurring between oppositions gives us a fresh take on how we evaluate the transit. After all, with Mars being the planet of action, war, and conflict, it seems fitting to consider some sort of catalytic event propelling us forward. The trouble with this is, in my view, we have fewer dates of Mars's oppositions to Gemini to measure and work with. If we were to take this one as the starting point, then the next Mars and Gemini opposition won't take place until 2054, and while this could potentially be an extremely long story arc in our lives, I personally think our lives shift far more quickly in many respects. Now, let's take a look at what this transit could bring. I'll do a deeper dive later this fall, but previews are important as we map the month of September and October, and we need to pay attention to events occurring in our lives now. Mars is an energy of strong desire, motivation, and often anger. In Gemini, some immediate significations include sharp words, sharp minds, severing communications, and being burned by words, ideas, or choices. Gemini has a natural zodiacal affinity with the third house, so this could be a transit where we might see everything from harsh words to full-out battles with siblings, extended family, and neighbors, or even accidents relating to modes of transportation. So while everyone should proceed with caution, Aries risings, you may want to be especially on your guard for these types of events because Gemini rules your third house. More obscure significations for Gemini include the lungs and bronchial tubes, the respiratory system more generally, and the nervous system, as well as the pericardium. Since Mars is associated with inflammation, fevers, burning, fire, and so forth, from a health perspective, its effects can be acute, particularly if you might be hit with a health-related transit. So Capricorn and Cancer Risings, this may be something for both of you to watch between now and March of next year. A couple of other things to note might be those who have Gemini in financial houses. So Taurus and Scorpio risings, this could be you guys, since Gemini can rule stocks in general, stockbrokers and speculation, and Aquarius risings, this could touch you peripherally since the fifth house is about speculation. You could all metaphorically be burned in some financial way. Libra Risings, you're going to want to pay attention to events touching your ninth house, higher learning, spirituality, travel, the law, and communications, contracts, and information associated with that. Gemini and Sag Risings, this could be an important transit for you and your relationships, especially if you have your ascendant descended axis at 8 or 25 degrees. Pisces, you'll want to pay attention to your home and family matters, real estate, property that you own, matters concerning inheritances, your parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, and the like. Since this transit is going to be angular for you, this is going to be a big one to flag. Leo Risings, you'll of course want to pay attention to topics concerning your 11th house, friends, acquaintances, business income, social engagements, associational groups, and your partner's finances, especially if they play the stock market or engage in any other speculative endeavors, similar to what I said for Aquarius Risings. Finally, Virgo Risings, you'll want to pay attention to matters concerning your career since this can undergo some fairly significant changes and this transit is, of course, also angular for you. 
As we get closer to the Mars retrograde period, I'll be covering off the potential implications of this transit for various rising signs in greater detail, but as I said, start preparing now. So to recap, look at your natal chart. Do you have any planets at 15 degrees of Libra? This is the degree that this initial conjunction kicked off. Then you need to look at Mars in your natal chart since the topics of that house will be woven into this current transit and it will be activated at the time of opposition. Next, you want to look at any planets that you have natally at 8 degrees in your charts that are in hard aspect to Mars's direct station. So this means that you want to look at planets that are squaring or opposing it. And then finally, because Mercury is the planetary ruler of this Gemini transit, look to where it is natally in your chart and the topics and placement of it, since these threads may also be woven into this overarching storyline for you as well. With that, let's get into the day by day. On Sunday, August the 21st, Mercury in Virgo opposes Neptune in Pisces. This is going to be a fairly swift transit since Mercury doesn't really hang out anywhere too long, but expect a couple of days where Mercury might struggle with its organizational abilities or clarity of thought, even when strongly placed in Virgo. With Neptune being retrograde, we need to be careful with things not being what they seem, and Mercury, of course, has a trickster energy, so avoid inking any deals. Despite the well-dignified Mercury, the moon in Gemini will square it briefly, so this could be a slightly emotionally charged and impulsive transit for everyone, given Mars's co-presence in the sign. Furthermore, Virgo is in Mars's terms, and since we're all up on what Mars and Gemini will be doing over the next several months, you now know to be cautious around any commitments that you make, or frankly any things that you might say to people, which could come back to bite you in the bum later. On Monday, August the 22nd, we have two transits to talk about, the more significant Sun entry into Virgo and then Mercury's trine to Pluto. So my cautionary notes around the Mercury-Neptune opposition are still relevant here too. Given the Sun's entry into a sign that it has very little dignity in, it needs to depend on the condition of its planetary host Mercury for assistance. Mercury is going to struggle a bit to support the Sun during its Virgoan sojourn. Obviously, it's in Mars's bounds, and then it'll move into Libra, where it has no traditional astrological sight line by aspect to the house that it rules. So what this basically means is that it can signal a time where we might be blindsided potentially in a relationship or in financial matters. And the sun, of course, is receiving that square from Mars and Gemini, so this isn't an easy solar ingress. Our plans could go awry, maybe we'll meet with some unexpected challenges, or maybe you will have difficulty getting the information that you need to make an important decision. Then Mercury's trying to Pluto is something else to look out for, but honestly, I wouldn't consider this to be an especially significant transit. All Pluto transits, however, tend to have a slightly consuming quality about them. Often our behaviors can become more obsessive than usual, and given that Mercury is an analytical Virgo, this energy can take on a shadow quality too of being excessively nitpicky. This said, I do like the Jupiterian expansiveness of this transit. It can help us unearth certain bits of information that we might be looking for. It can help encourage us to go deep in our analytical efforts, especially given Virgo's strength in the sign. And given that Pluto also rules waste and rubbish and things that get cast aside, this could be very much a day where we're doing some mental cleanup after the mildly discombobulating Neptune opposition. Next, on Wednesday, August the 24th, we have a big astrological news day since Uranus changes direction. I've talked a lot about retrograde plans before and even flagged what we need to do as preparation, so make sure you check out some of my previous forecasts. Uranus will be going retrograde on the 18th degree of Taurus. It will turn direct again on January the 22nd, 2023, around the late degrees, around 14, nearly 15 degrees of Taurus. A couple of things that you can do to help you gauge the effects of this transit will be looking back to May of 2022, when Uranus was around the degree that it will be stationing direct on. So any decisions that you made, any changes that you initiated in and around this time may be up for grabs by the Promethean God. 
Then the other thing you will want to take note of is if anything occurred in and around the triple conjunction that was a clear Uranus, Mars, and North Node in Taurus signature. The storyline for this event may not be over, so pay attention to how things will unfold, since Uranus will then pass over the degree that it's stationed retrograde on around March the 30th of 2023. Ultimately, we could be forced to undo any hasty decisions or actions that we undertook, or maybe we did something in particular or triggered a particular event in our lives that will see various Uranian reversals, surprises, and interruptions take place between now and then the end of March, beginning of April 2023. Next, late on August the 25th, we have Mercury entering Libra. Planetary ingresses are usually fairly noticeable events, so this could be anything from receipt of a message to an important conversation with a partner. Because Mars is within orb of a trine, this could also be a really beneficial energy if you need to undertake any communications. Given Mercury is in Venus-ruled Libra, you may find yourself being unusually eloquent or even find a way of being diplomatic if you need to convey a particular message. The trine from Mars can help you be more decisive, and this is a great energy, especially because Libra at times can be slightly wishy-washy. Next, between August 25th to the 27th, Venus and Leo squares both the nodes and Uranus. Taken together, this could be a challenging but cathartic transit involving past relationships, releasing long-held tensions, and unexpectedly finding positivity and personal growth as a result of this transit. Again, I don't think that this is going to be one of those especially profound transits, but maybe one where you find some closure in a certain area of your life, especially if this is hitting any of the angles in your chart. Then, on August 27th, the Sun enters Virgo and squares Mars in Gemini. We already talked a little bit about the effects of Mars on Mercury, so this is going to be similar for the Sun. The square from Mars and Gemini is going to create some tension and conflict between what you know and what information you have access to, possibly even what you're thinking, and what you want to do according to the unfolding of your solar life path. Whichever way you cut the celestial mustard, Mars and Gemini can be extremely impulsive, rash, cutting, and liable to make decisions without having all the facts. With Mercury going into aversion to the house that it rules, the Sun may be forced to make decisions without having all of the information at its disposal. So, as the old adage goes, act in haste, repent in leisure, and if you aren't careful, then Mars's retrograde period could, of course, be your period of leisurely repentance. The last thing coloring this transit is, of course, the new moon in Virgo, which is occurring fairly early on the 27th. So be aware that there could be a further impulsiveness to this transit, more emotional sensitivity, maybe a desire to make a decision based on a gut instinct rather than facts, or to act a little recklessly, since new moons can have the Aries-like energy where they don't really consider risks or consequences. Again, that day just be cautious if you're being asked to make any major decisions that could be binding. Alright, so that's everything that I have for you this week. I hope that those who watched found it helpful. As always, I want to thank my subscribers, old and new, and encourage you, if you enjoyed this forecast, to drop a comment below, like, and of course, please subscribe. So until next week, be well, everyone, and take care.